Hello everybody, welcome back to Koi Plate Minecraft Bucket Live. And today happened to be, what day is it there? 8-3, August 3rd of 2016. I was hoping I would be able to record yesterday, but I kind of failed that, didn't I? Um, so I've been kind of busy. Yes, busy with all sorts of different things. I was actually out and about yesterday. And what am I doing here, by the way? I'm going to be putting dark oak wood slabs for the floor. However, I do want to test out the floor. And because this is already dark oak here, I may also go with um, stone brick. Not stone brick. Um, stone slabs. I may actually go with stone slabs. So I'm going to try out a bit of the floor and give that a try. But yeah, I was out and about pretty much all day yesterday. And then when I came home, I ended up having to do a bunch of stuff around the house. Because we're going to end up having a lot of people over coming in, I don't know, this weekend or something like that. We're going to end up with quite a lot of people swinging by and hanging out with us. It's going to be fun. You know what I need? I could use a furnace or three to kind of heat this up. Actually, I got some stone here, so this is good news. Let's use the stone that I've got for right now. That way I don't ruin all the cobble. Because I kind of want to keep some of the cobble anyways. And, oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll just make a bunch of these and do that. That's right. So let's let's see what this looks like first, because this may be the way to go, and or I will mix mix the colors and the flavors here and see what this all looks like. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of eye craft. If you guys haven't noticed, I've already got UAC coming up on Wednesdays, which by the time you've seen this episode, it's already out and stuff's happening there. Yeah, you know what? I could do this as an edging, or I could do the dark oak edge and edge just to do the contrast between the diorite and this thing, and then do the internal side as the actual slab. So let's, let's give that a try real quick over here. Yeah, I, I wish I had silk touch now. I just wish I had silk touch, because then I could take all of you, and things would be just that much easier. Yeah, we'll just go down this way. Yeah, so everything's been good, actually, for the most part. And with this whole move and everything, it just requires me, basically, to, you know, just work hard and build and build and build and build and do repairs. So most recently, I just figured out how to essentially repair a recess light. Yes, I've never had recess lighting, so I don't really know how they work. But the place I'm in happened to come with recess lighting, so that's actually pretty nifty. And I was like... I went to, you know, the store and I was like, how do you guys fix this thing? And they're like, oh, it's real simple. All you got to do is pull this out, take these wires off, replace them, wire them up to main wiring, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I ended up getting getting recess lighting that actually goes, basically it's like recess LED lighting. Um, they say it's supposed to last 20 years on one bulb. So I'm going to trust them on that to see how true it is. Yeah, I think this is better as an outer material. Oh, okay. We're going to have to do this one. And I guess I should do it here too, huh? Let's see about this, this section right here. Yeah, so that's kind of what I've been up to lately. And I've been, I've got, finally got my desk. Yes, so I put together the hutch the other day. Um, only reason I did that because the instructions are kind of wonky. And it actually paid to put together the hutch first because there's a portion in the instruction in the very beginning of the desk which says, by the way, if you happen to have a hutch, install hutch now, right? And so that's essentially what I did. And I haven't put together the desk yet because, well, just because I just haven't gotten around to it. I was hoping to do that a little bit today, but that didn't that didn't quite go the way I was thinking it was gonna go. So yeah, I'm gonna have to go that way like that. Okay, that's gonna do. Let's, let's, ooh. Yeah, so I've been reading up on quite a bit of space stories. I've been keeping track of the whole Juno satellite, which is super cool. It's that's essentially the first satellite we've ever made that is solar powered that has reached Jupiter. Yes, our very first solar satellite to Jupiter. So in other words, it has solar panels. Yes, this satellite has... I don't know what I'm going to do here. I really don't know what I want to do right here. The satellite has solar panels. And it's super cool. And it's already made its first pass through Jupiter. It's got to make, I think, like three passes or something like that. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong about that. But um, essentially, it's finished its first orbital path, which puts it quite far out. 
And then eventually it goes to a second orbital path and eventually settles in on a, what is it, I think 2,000 mile high orbit above Jupiter itself. Which all in all is like super amazing. And already we found out something new. Hmm, what am I doing here? I guess I'm going to have to tear this out to make that fit here. I was thinking I'd keep it, but I guess not. Not anymore, I guess. Do I still have diorite? I do. Ooh, very nice. Um, that's not diorite. This is all polished. Lovely. Okay, you're going to become polished. And I don't know what, I, what I'm going to do here because I only have one polished left and I want to make more. There it goes. I know now I'm stuck with all this polished diorite and I'm not going to get, get rid of it ever. Anyway, so let's let's continue continue my little story here. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Well, shoot. I'm just lost in my in my thought now. I'm just lost in my thought. Anyway, so yeah, Juno spacecraft has made one amazing discovery. I am actually pretty impressed by it. Um, so apparently Juno has found out that um, Io has a collapsible atmosphere. Even I didn't know this, okay? I didn't really realize Io even had an atmosphere to begin with, okay? So apparently Io used out tons of sulfur, mostly because you guys all know it, Io is the planet that's essentially one big giant ball of lava. Um, did I get that one? I hope I did. It's bit one big ball of lava that um, the reason the Io is even warm and or hot and has tons of volcanoes on the surface is because the magnetic field of Jupiter is essentially tugging and tugging and tugging in the Io. And that's actually what creates, that's actually what does create the volcanic. Hmm. I wonder if I want that. I think I do. If I do that, I'm gonna have to do it here too. I think it'll look nicer if I do it that way. I really do. So that means this is like that, that's perfect. And this is like that, so that's perfect. And I still don't know what I'm doing there. And then this one here, I could do the same thing. I think that'd be a good deal. So let me, let me figure this out really quick. I will be right back, guys. Okay, guys, I am back finally and I don't know what I'm gonna do with this little square here But for now it's gonna stay um, I decided to cover this all up at this point and the only way down would be right here That happened to go right to an edge here and I'm gonna and there's a um, cave behind here by the way I had dug out a cave some time ago, so I can use that as a way to step down um, But I also forgot you can eat spider eyes I completely forgot it causes like five seconds of poison, whatever, but I completely forgot you can even eat spider eyes in the first place. Somehow I didn't even know this, right? All the time I've been playing Minecraft, never even thought to even try to eat a spider eye. So, oh well on my part, right? But yeah, anyways, getting back to Io. So why does Io have a collapsible atmosphere? So we just found out why Io even works as a planet and why it even has volcanoes, right? And so as Io travels between Jupiter and the sun, Io will actually, the atmosphere will actually just basically self implode, so to speak, and just collapse into snow. Um, it basically freezes, okay? The atmosphere basically freezes up and turns into snow and just lands on the surface which is actually a pretty, pretty cool thing. And so it only happens when Io goes behind Jupiter. Yes, so when Io is behind Jupiter, you're gonna see like no atmosphere. And then when Io pops back out on the sun side and the sun starts melting all the sulfuric, um, sulfuric acid, sulfuric dioxide, I don't know what it is, but it's just some type of sulfur. And Io will actually go, it goes straight from a solid to a gas which is like, what? Holy cow, right? And so its atmosphere, it's kind of tenuous, tenuous, and it's all dependent on the fact of how how much sunlight Io actually has versus how much non-sunlight Io has, which is like, whoa. Okay, so that's one thing I've been following and I was like, mind blown by this. I need, I need to put some stuff down. I've got too many things in my inventory 
to even try to pick any more things up. And that's, that's totally not good. So I'm going to leave the andesite here. I'm going to leave my extra stone and my diorites and my cobblestone, which I probably should have put up there. Yeah, by the way, the whole reason I made this darn thing was actually because I wanted to make this whole thing out of cobble and I just failed that, didn't I? Um, now I'm making it out of stone and whatnot. At least the stone is cobble-like and that will do for me. And I hate this sometimes. Why must you brick like this? It's just, that's just so wrong, you know? Anyway, so what else have I been discovering about um, Jupiter lately? Not much other than that, because Juno just got there and is making slow but steady scientific progress. So we're going to eventually learn more about Jupiter as it goes. We also learned, by the way, the great red spot. And this may also be how the sun works, by the way. The great red spot, the atmosphere directly above the great red spot, is actually hotter than the surface. And so this must be, in a sense, how the sun works. Because the sun, the, the surface temperature of the sun is relatively, and I use the word relative, relatively cool in comparison to the rest of the sun. Which is amazing because that sun does like corona mass ejection or whatever. Those are like supercharged, super hot plasma versus the surface of the sun. So Jupiter's great red spot is practically... And I'm going to make some hypothesis and some assumptions here and some half truth and whatever. So take it with a grain of salt when I say this part. Practically powered by magnetism. Okay, I'm going to make this prediction. See if I'm right or whatever. But practically powered by magnetism and is probably the reason the storm has existed since forever. Okay, I'm probably wrong. People are going to say it's powered by the wind or whatever. But hey, hey. Let me have a th let me have a hypothesis. Let me prove it wrong eventually. Okay, I would like to know. This is just my leading hypothesis to the solution here. Okay, yes. Yeah, so this definitely looks nice like this. Now I could do this just as a single layer here, and then just do oh missed one, and then just do dark oak throughout the rest of it. Mm, that could always work. That really could. Or I could do another layer of dark oak and then shrink it and come back around to doing um, another layer of stone. Let's try. Let's see what let's see what we actually get here. It'd be interesting to see what it looks like. Um, something else I've learned recently in science is the universe. not the universe. Our galaxy. Apparently, they mapped. Oh, how do you say that word? Septic stars. Is that right? Septic stars. Let me let me let me pull it up really really quick. I want to know what it's called. I forgot the star name. I can't really pronounce it. Septid, septid. I don't want to do the survey. Go away, survey. I'm just gonna click random answer. There we go. Okay. Anyway, so where it's a word. Septid, septid, septid. Where are you? I don't know. I can't find it. I'm looking at this article. There it is. Sept, sept. Sepades, sepades, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna call it sepades. Correct me if I'm wrong, people. Please correct me if I'm wrong. So sepades, they looked at the distribution of sepades and you know what they found? That the, that the galaxy has a fairly even distribution of sepades except for a certain spot in the center of the galaxy. Oh, oh my gosh, this is an insane thing. And what is this down here? Oh, well, that's nice. Okay, well, I'm going to light this up for my own safety for later because I'm going to go there. It's like right on the other side of this hole here. So I'm going to have to remember that this exists. Holy cow. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're going we're gonna to cover this all back up because I didn't need to go that deep. Not at all. Anyway, so yes. So you'll find that there's a distribution of young stars. Where is it at again? pretty much on the entire external arm of the galaxy. And then you're gonna also find a distribution of young stars directly in the center of the galaxy. However, that, that bulge portion that forms the bar of our galaxy is supposedly filled with all these older galaxies. And you're like, what? Filled with older galaxies? But that can't be right. And apparently that's the case and we don't quite know why. I don't know why, they don't know why. And so we've got only one section filled with only older stars and everything else is pretty much filled with young stars. And 
there's no answer at this point to this. So the great mystery continues about our galaxy. The other interesting thing I've been reading up on is life as we know it. Why has life formed on Earth? Why does life even exist? Okay. Oh, I ran out. Okay, I need my crafting table now. Crafting table can go there since I finished that section. And we will just, bam, take all this and make it dark oak. Yeah, right, right. Okay, this, this can just combine here. This can get out of the way. And there we go. Now we got enough. Anyway, so life as we know it. How did it form and why? They, they're making an interesting prediction about the possibilities of life on various styles of system. They're basically saying the older the universe is, the higher likelihood life will actually exist probability-wise. This is all probability-based, okay? So the older the universe is, the likelihood life will exist. They say this because um, red dwarf stars will exist for trillions of years, I think they thought. Trillions of years. Meanwhile, our sun exists for several billion years. Other stars burn out probably several million years. And so they're saying there's two possibilities for... Hmm. I think I'm going to make another row, another row of dark oak here. That would probably make the most sense right now. And this side is going to get so dark. Um, yeah, so they're saying that possibility-wise, there's some interesting issues with this because it basically says we either exist as life because we came out too early, so we're kind of known as premature life. And so there's, a, there's an entire possibility that we could actually exist as the only life in the known universe or the known galaxy at least, okay? And so all other life could be essentially microbial or whatever, right? And it creates a lot of dilemma because we might have just had interesting conditions that made this work really well for us, but failed for just about, okay, egg, you can go away. There we go. Really? I still picked up the egg? Wow. Um, yeah, so life could technically have come too early for us here on Earth because our star, as light as it is, as small as it is, is technically a dwarf sun. Yes, our sun's a dwarf sun. If you don't believe me, go look up the largest star in the universe and you'll realize our sun, our sun barely even fits an even tiny, tiny portion of it, okay? So our sun's a dwarf sun. And for life to exist around a dwarf sun is actually pretty darn slim for that to actually happen. So it's very interesting to find this out. And they either said we exist too early or we exist far, far, far too late. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stay here the night. I'm going to border, board up most of this here because I want to just stick around. I've got things to do and I don't want to have to go away again. So I'm just going to close everything off so nothing can get in. Maybe some skeleton might. But for the most part, nothing will get in. There we go. And yeah, that one too. I could totally see a creeper walking in on me. Um, oh no, you know what? They're going to beam in in here too, huh? Oh, I just finished this entire thing. So what I could do here is I could make the center or a center be all stone. So that could be like all of this could be stonework. Okay, so I've obviously got dungeon hanging out on the other side here. My inventory is quite full, so I need to empty it out. I made some L shape. Don't ask me why I did the L shape, but it, it works, right? Okay, so I'm going to get out there, and I'm going to go ahead and defeat my enemies that are hanging out here. I bet you there's a creeper. There usually is. So let me go ahead and dump all my stuff in here as best as I can. Right now, I don't really need the cobble for the time being, but I'll, I'll make do as best as I can. Um... Yeah, so like I said, I'm going to leave all the links down below. And if you guys like this interesting episode, if you guys like the update about um, space and everything, please do give me a like and subscribe and definitely leave me a comment. I look forward to, I'm going to need some more of this later, but right for right now, I'm just going to dump it out of my inventory because it's just, it's taking up too much space right now, especially with me needing to take on the skeleton. So I'm going to leave this recording on. And as we sign off, we're going to see if I don't, Ooh, if I don't fall off like that and die. Um, yeah, good luck me, right? Yeah, that looks better. And what am I going to do here? What am I going to do here? I don't really need this. 
I really don't need this right here, but it's here because... See, what am I going to do here? This is like really bad. <laughs> I need to fix this. We're going to have to find out what to do with that in another episode. Um, for now, I'm just going to kind of leave it there. And let's go skeleton hunting because I know there's one right there. So let's get him out of, of my area. There we go. Perfect. And we're going to call it a day with that. Have a good day. Good night or good morning. We'll see you all next time, folks. Bye. Here's a poem. <clears throat> Welcome to iCraft. Season 3's finally here. We're sorry to keep you waiting, but now there's nothing to fear. We have all our old friends, as well as some new. We're ready to have some fun, and I hope you are too.